Welcome back to Jewish World Weekly. Now, it's a little unusual for a museum commemorating a diaspora Jew to be established here in Israel, but maybe not when that Jew is Albert Einstein. The genius physicist Time Magazine declared the most influential person of the 20th century. Last week, a cornerstone ceremony was held at the Givat Ram campus of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, which Einstein helped to found and to which he bequeathed his personal papers, intellectual property, and rights to his name for the establishment of the Einstein House, an institution dedicated to his life and legacy. Designed by acclaimed architect Daniel Liebskin, it will display his archives and other exhibits detailing his scientific achievements. One of the driving forces behind the establishment of the Einstein House is Ido Aharoni, the former Council General of Israel to New York, and he joins us in studio. You know, great to have you. I've been hearing talk for years, decades, of some kind of uh, uh, museum or institution dedicated to Einstein here. How did this initiative finally come to, come to bear? Well, the game changer is one person, and his name is Jose Mugrabi. Jose Mugrabi is a dear friend of mine, is one of the most famous art collectors in the world. He owns the largest collection of Andy Warhol, for example. And Jose Mugrabi is a passionate Zionist, loves Israel wants to help Israel in any way he can. And in 2017, we had a casual meeting in his office in New York, and I told him about my vision for Israel as a brand, and I told him about the opportunity to do something with the Einstein archives. And Mr. Mugrabi, who does not have a formal education, thought it would be a meaningful thing for the state of Israel, for Israel as a brand, for the Jewish people to uh, be able to support the project. So he made a decision to underwrite the entire project, and the building will be named the Mary and Jose Mugrabi Building. So, you know, I've been pushing this for many, many years, but nothing really happened until that meeting with Mr. Mugrabi, who committed all the resources. And this is not a, uh, a simple thing. This is a very significant donation. And, uh, and I think that Mr. Mugrabi is building here a legacy that will last for generations. All right, we, well, let's we, talk about that, that legacy, because Albert Einstein, uh, it is interesting. Uh, he did help found the um, Hebrew University. He left it his papers and the rights to his name. But he's, he only visited Israel once. He was, of course, raised, born and raised in Germany. He spent his life in America. So why should he get a museum in Israel? So the answer has a lot to do with uh, Dr. Chaim Weizmann, a scientist himself, who really took the baton from Herzl. Herzl had a vision in 1902 to create the Jewish state as a bastion of science and knowledge production. And Chaim Weizmann recruited the famous Jew at the time, Albert Einstein. And Albert Einstein actively raised money for the Hebrew U, not only for the Hebrew U, by the way, he was also instrumental in the establishment of Technion, and he became the first chairman of the board, honorary chairman of the board, in 1925 when the university opened its doors. It's true that he's been here, he came to the land of Israel only once. In 1923, he came with Sigmund Freud and Martin Buber, and they broke ground. But when he died in 1955 and they opened his will, they discovered that his heart, his passion, always belonged to the Hebrew University and to the Zionist movement. He was a self-proclaimed devout Zionist. Though he was offered the presidency of the state of Israel at one point, which he turned down. Right, he wisely declined and he said, I don't think it's appropriate for someone who's not a citizen to accept that position and I think that that was a smart choice on his part. But Einstein was a Zionist. Uh, when you read his uh, personal documents, it's clear. In fact, when he died, when he had the stroke in 1955, it was in the middle of him writing a speech for Israel's seventh birthday, which like a page from Startup Nation, when you read that speech. He talks about Israel as a bastion of creativity, about Israel as a place that will produce conceptual products and so on. So Einstein's legacy is part of who we are, and I felt for many, many years that uh, we need to celebrate the brand because Einstein is synonymous with creativity and innovation. The, br the brand proposition, the value proposition is inspiration, Einstein and Buyers, one of the most powerful brand names in the world, and it's time for us, Israel as a brand,
and to associate ourselves with someone who's part of our legacy. Right, now certainly the uh, Hebrew University has those papers of his tremendous theorems, and of course we'll have uh, deal with his scientific achievements, which are uh, of course beyond magnitude. But he did have his, he was a Zionist, but his relationship with the Jewish state was a little ambivalent. He had political views, which even in his lifetime put him more on the left, today be on the certain far left. Would the museum deal with those aspects of his character? Well, the museum would probably, look, I'm not part of the university, so I can't speak on their behalf, but I know that a big chunk of those 80,000 documents are, is not scientific. Uh, these are personal documents. You will have in the museum his personal uh, record collection. Uh, people will be interested in knowing what kind of music Albert Einstein liked. Now, in terms of his politics, I would say he was a humanist, just like Theodor Herzl. Theodor Herzl didn't believe that we should even have an army. Uh, and I think that Einstein uh, belonged to that school of thought. And at that time, this is way before the Holocaust, this is way before the Nazis came into power in Germany, um, it was, uh, I think, a mainstream view among the Jews of Germany. Right, now the, uh, there was a groundbreaking ceremony. Uh, uh, when could we expect to see the process completed so that the public will be able to go see the Einstein House? So the president of the university, Professor Asher Cohen, who's done a phenomenal job working with the Mugrabi family, uh, announced last night that this will be done in two years. Let's hope that uh, they'll, um, they'll stick to the plan. All right, well, I think uh, a lot of people, when it's done, are going to be very excited to come uh, go see the Einstein House and learn about that connection that he had with Israel and the Jewish state and the Hebrew University that a lot of people may not even be aware of. No doubt in my mind, it will become one of the biggest tourism attractions in Israel, All if right. not the biggest. Okay, Ido Aroni, thank you for joining us. Thank you. On Jewish World Weekly.